this is the guts of a 410 watt Shoemaker or Schumacher um, inverter, typical modified square wave. And there are a great deal of similarities, again, because it is a fairly low end uh, commercial um, consumer grade inverter. A number of similarities to the um, old Power to Go one that I did a guts video of a couple of weeks back, which I still haven't gotten around to building a proper case for, but and again, haven't had the time. Ends a happy fun torment, but anyways, what is uh, one of the interesting things to note about this is that this one doesn't feature all the doubled up MOSFETs that the that the um, Power to Go one had because this one is m circa mid 1990s, and um, MOSFETs had not yet been developed with the or or MOSFET um, conducting resistances were still fairly high relative to what they are now, so this one features as well as some loading capacities, and uh, this one it is, um, you can note that each MOSFET in the thing, like here, which is the H-bridge and these which are the transformer primary side drivers are all um, doubled up, whereas in this one there's only one of each. Now this one also features a bit more substantial heat sinking, so thermal management would be a bit better. This one just has a piece of a quarter inch um, uh, aluminum sheet stamping. Uh, this one actually has proper uh, heat sinks. And it's all one big uh, aluminum extrusion that the PCB actually slots into. So, obviously thermal management in this one is a bit better. Uh, then, aside from that, there are other things like this one. The uh, diodes, like this, which is the grayest bridge for the secondary side of the uh, of the transformer. These are something five four. Can't read the full part number on any of them, but those are just um, ultra fast. Would look to be three ampere or four ampere diodes or or, or whatever. Also, something around that in that range. Um, ultra fast because again it is this uh, this is operating at tens of thousands of cycles per second so you do need the um, ultra fast um, rectifiers because ordinary uh, uh, 1 in 4000 series 1 in 5400 series diodes etc don't have sufficiently fast uh, conduction times and they don't work or it takes a while for them to start conducting after they've been uh, reverse some um, reverse bias and it takes a while for them to start conducting again and that renders them useless above a few hundred cycles per second and this is obviously above a few hundred cycles per second then um, other than that uh, one interesting feature to note is that all of the controls are on this secondary board which also features things like the like a display which depending on which, which idiot light is illuminated tells whether or not it is indicating uh, load, ba um, battery potential, or output potential. And those are controlled by one of the, by the button on the right, which is, of course, that one. The one on the left is uh, on off. And one good thing about this is that it toggles, If is that it just simply toggles. If you push the button, it advances the next thing and stays there. One annoying thing about these, uh, the Sunforce, even though this was five, was more than five times the cost of the, um, Shoemaker or Schumacher or whatever, is that it doesn't. Is that if you push it, you need to push it and then hold the button and then release the button and hold it in again for it to stay on the setting. And as soon as you let go of the button, it changes. But then again, I'm looking to get better piercing inverters. But anyways. Then on the, uh, elsewhere on the board, there's this TO220 package device, which is a 7806T a potential regulator. Somewhat interesting to see that, although uh, most likely whatever microcontroller they're using is tolerant of 600 volt, uh, is tolerant of six volts, or it's being overdriven and will die shortly. But something to be remains to be seen because uh, even though this inverter has had uh, some use, and uh, 
Then there's this, which is the microcontroller, which has a paper label uh, glued onto what's some family microcontrollers. Probably not a PIC because of the 6 volt operating potential. PICs don't generally go above 5.5 volts. But it has X150-75-R1 and 100802, which is most likely August 2nd of 2010, which is when this was either programmed or when the particular code revision on it was um, written or updated or finalized or whatever. Then there's a couple of uh, caps for a ripple, noise suppression, whatever, because square wave, cheap square wave inverters like this do generate a great deal of QRM. Especially really big ones like that, but that's not the one that's subject to this review or gets video of. Then on the other side, pretty much a bunch of mostly surface mount passives. Some surface mount diodes over here, that's what the little black things are. And this camera's really crap for um, close-up shots. Then other components, there's some SOT23, I think, package device with some bodge wire just glommed onto it, which I'll get into a bit. Or cover what that is for in a bit. Um, that just has some um, code 004F9A and top line is E43A. Don't know what that is. I uh, haven't had time to look up a lot of that. Then there's a 74HC595 shift register there and this one which is a not really hard to see these laser rich packages. I don't see Right. It is AZ7500BM. That's what that particular guy is. That's pretty much it for the uh, control board. Then there's this, which is what the bodge wires are for. This is the output for the USB thing, because like a lot of inverters nowadays, it has a little uh, power-only USB port on the front, and that is just a 7805 potential regulator that's just glommed onto this um, board with a couple of uh, miscellaneous resistors and there's this and, uh, and everything's all wired in series with this big 10 ohm looks to be about a 5 watt resistor I'd say because this is just a simple linear regulator and especially with the less than ideal thermal management of the design is that what this does is this means that a lot of the uh, power is dissipated in this and not in the regulator. Although you'd expect something like this, especially considering the microcontroller, you'd expect to see something like an Im implementation of something like a two of a MC34063. Since that's what the Sunforce inverter does for the 5 volt supply for the radio receiver and uh, signal relay in the remote box for it. And especially considering that MC34063s are fairly cheap and without external power components, aside from the usual passives, are good up to about one and a half ampere, so that'd be more than enough for a microcontroller's uh, display and a half ampere allowance for an external USB socket. But I digress. Anyways, then there's a big knot of cables leading back down to the main board, and these are for everything on this board it's there's um it's marked all what they're for on the thing which is fairly interesting and it's also fairly useful for decoding what exactly this thing does or what each one does there's one for the buzzer one for each of the um transformer driving mosfets and two marked uh 60 hz for 60 cycles per second those are obviously uh, H-bridge drivers. And there's also one for the fan and um, some sensing ones like there's little I think yeah it's a big resistor down there for obviously most likely current sensing so all the actual brains of the inverter are on this uh, secondary board and pretty much it's all just power on this so that's one fairly interesting thing because most other inverters like this one all the actual control circuitry, which is actually no microcontrollers, it's just a monolithic uh, switch mode supply driver for the trans for the transformer and a 
five five six uh, dual five 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 timer for controlling the um, uh, output waveform and the H bridge and everything with some uh, other operational amplifiers and other CMOS logic chips. But this one is purely no mo no microcontrollers whatsoever. But this one also predates the advent of a lot of that stuff. So all in all, fairly interesting design for Chinese crap. But yeah. <laughs>